everybody! Welcome back to Mix It Up and today we're going to be making one of my favourite things in the whole world tonkatsu sandwiches. They're so so good. I first had them when I was in Japan for the first time in like a konbini which is like a Japanese convenience store and I was totally hooked. I've since put them on the menu in places that I've worked before and now I'm going to show you how to make them in your very own home. And like everything in Mix It Up I want this to tie into some of the other videos I've done in the past mainly the um, Japanese style loaf we made before, the panda meat, even though the name is French, but it's a Japanese style kind of boxy loaf. Uh, we're going to use that to make this sandwich. It's the perfect bread for this kind of sandwich. And it's kind of like, it's not that, it's not that hard to make. It's not a hard sandwich to make by any means. There's just a few little steps. There's a little bit of planning, but definitely it's worth it. It's a real special treat. Okay. You're going to, you've probably seen these guys on Instagram. Tonkatsu Sandos pop up a lot on Instagram because they look really great. And you've probably been like, hey, what is that? Or I want to try that. Well, now we're going to do it today. So I'm going to talk you through very quickly what you're going to need to make this sandwich. So we have a few ingredients here. I'm just going to very quickly talk you through what you're going to need to make this. You know, it's nothing too crazy. First thing you're going to need is a really nice bread. This is the loaf. This is the same recipe that we made uh, for our perfect toast video, which you can find in the description, link in the description below, or just click a box that's around here somewhere now. And uh, yeah, this is perfect for this kind of sandwich. If you don't want to go to the hassle of making this or you know, you want something else, I probably recommend like a nice enriched dough for this, like a brioche or any kind of white bread, like batch bread is fine either. Uh, yeah, this is the one I would definitely recommend for making this. Uh, you're going to need some panko breadcrumbs, a little bit of Chinese five spice. This is just for the marinade for the pork, which we're going to talk about in a minute. For each person that's going to be eating this, you're going to need one kind of uh, pork chop. So we're going to use two for this episode. We're making two sandwiches, so two pork chops. Uh, you're going to need some eggs for making the panne. Some soy sauce we're going to need for the marinade. Some cabbage, that makes up the kind of crunch, a lot of the crunch of this sandwich, as well as the coating on the pork. Kewpie mayonnaise! Our best friend, kewpie mayonnaise. The bottle, bottle, bottle. And the final ingredient is tonkatsu sauce. Yeah, this shouldn't be too hard to find either. If you can't get tonkatsu sauce, brown sauce works really, really well. Just any kind of generic brown sauce will work just as well, to be honest. Tonkatsu sauce is just a little bit stickier. It's just a little bit different, but brown sauce works really, really well if you can't get your hands on this. All right, that's about it. Okay, this is what you're going to need to make it. You're going to need a little bit of milk as well, uh, just when we're panning our pork. But for now, this is kind of roughly what you're going to need to make this. Disclaimer, just to say, this pork is going to be deep fried. It's like a deep fried breaded cutlet. That's kind of what makes up this sandwich. So we're going to be using a deep fryer because I have one and it's much, much easier than using a big vat of oil. You could also pan fry this in a pan and then finish it off in the oven. That's fine too. Whatever works for you, whatever makes your life easier, I will be using a deep fryer. Maybe you could even air fry this. I don't know. I don't have an air fryer. I've never used one before. I see people, you know, buying them, talking about them all the time. Maybe if you make this at home, let me know how you get on. If you did use an air fryer, I'd be very curious to see how this works in an air fryer. All right, let's get started. So the first step of this process is we're going to flatten out our pork and we're also going to brine it. We're doing both of these things to make our sandwich more, you know, so there's a nice even ratio, a good ratio of meat to bread. It's going to spread out the entire bread, which is really what we want for this recipe. And also it's going to very evenly season the meat which can be something a little bit difficult when you're doing deep fried food. Sometimes you can only season the outside, but this way the meat's going to be seasoned the whole way through and it's going to make it a little bit more tender as well, which we also like. If you skip this step and just go straight to panning and deep frying it, you are going to find your meat is a lot, uh, it's a little bit tougher, which we really don't want. So don't skip this step. Please don't skip this step. If you do skip this step, don't be at me saying it was tough. Okay. You gotta, you gotta brine it. Please brine it. Please, please brine it. Okay. It's not hard. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to get some cling film. So we're going to just get uh, one sheet on the table here like this. The reason we're using cling film is because you're going to see why in a minute. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's going to slip and slide everywhere. And then we are going to put our uh, pork in the middle. And then we're going to put some cling film on top. All right, just like this. Okay, so first step is we want to flatten these pork chops. So basically, once you have your pork in between two layers of cling film, like so, you're going to want something to hit it with. If you have a meat tenderizing mallet, now would be a good time to use it. I actually don't have one, so I'm just going to use this uh, heavy bottomed uh, saucepan. So anything like that, anything that you can, ideally it'll have a handle so you can get a nice, you know, get a, one of those going. Uh, don't go crazy though, don't, don't break your rented apartment table, okay? Don't go too nuts. All right, let's go. Let's give this guy a few whacks. Ready? Ready? 
So as you can see, this is much flatter than it was before. It's just gonna, you know, make our ratio for our sandwich a little bit nicer and tenderize it too. So I'll put that over here. Now we're gonna do our other guy. Okay, so now we're gonna brine these guys. Well, in this case, we want our brine to be about 5% salt, 5% sugar. So I've got uh, just over a liter of water in here and that's what we're gonna use to brine our uh, pork. So first things first, we're just gonna put in a splash of soy sauce, about 10 mils, I guess, just a little bit, yeah. We're also gonna put in a decent pinch of salt and a decent pinch of sugar. And finally, we're gonna put in a bit of, a decent pinch of Chinese five spice. Just goes great with pork, really, to be honest. All right, once all those ingredients are in, we're just gonna whisk this up a little bit. All right, perfect. All right, once this is all nice and mixed and fully incorporated, we're going to add our pork in there. Bye guys, see you later. And ideally we should let these brine overnight or for at least like eight hours, ideally. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. And I will see you back here tomorrow to cook these guys. All right, until then, take it easy. All right, welcome back. It's the next day and we're ready to make our sandwiches. We've got our fryer set up over here on 180. That's gonna heat up. And in the meantime, we're gonna get the rest of our stuff ready to make our sandwich. So first things first, we've got our cabbage here. I've taken off the outer leaves already. And we're gonna thinly slice this on a Japanese mandolin for the sandwich. You can do this by hand, but it's so much easier on the mandolin. So if you have a mandolin like this, or even a blade attachment, for uh, finely chopping veg on a blender. I would use that now. Do it by hand either, but you just get a really nice finish when it's on the mandolin. So we're gonna set this onto its lowest or its thinnest setting. So first of all, we're gonna cut this guy in half. We're not gonna use like barely any of this to be honest. You can keep it aside and use it for something else. All right, so we're gonna shred this guy on our mandolin. All right, so we got about, uh, what, uh, uh, maybe a quarter, less than a quarter? Less than a quarter? What's half a quarter, an eighth? So we got about an eighth of a cabbage shredded up nice and thin here that we're just gonna momentarily put aside and get the rest of our sandwich good to go. And by the rest of our sandwich, I mean our pork. It's pork time. So put this aside, get it in the fridge, it's not going to be in there for longer than a few minutes. So just, just forget about it for a few minutes. All right, so we're going to take our pork chops out of their marinade now and just dry them off on a clean cloth, which we will obviously then wash afterwards. All right, so just give these guys a flip. Make sure they've been dried off a wee bit. And then we are going to start the panning process. Panning is basically just when you put something in flour, eggs and breadcrumbs and deep fry it. That's what we're gonna do now. So here we have some seasoned flour, two eggs beaten with a little bit of milk, and then our panko breadcrumbs from before. So very, very simple, going from left to right, flour, egg, breadcrumbs. All right, so. Generally with the panning method, you wanna get one, keep one hand wet, one hand dry. We're only panning two steaks here, so it's like not that big a deal if you don't do that, but it's just good practice. So keep one hand wet, one hand dry. Mmm, nice. Alright, so our oil is nice and hot and we are ready to fry these guys. So we've got our fryer on 180 and we're going to fry them for about six minutes until they're nice and golden brown and crispy on the outside and the internal temperature of the pork should read 72 degrees Celsius. So let's get frying. So we're just going to slice our bread for our tonkatsu sandwiches, nice thick slices. And that is our first tonkatsu cutlet done. So we're just gonna take it out of the basket and put it aside to cool on a clean tea towel. Get rid of some of that oil. 
it's really important that you let your tonkatsu cutlet rest for a bit at this stage because it's still going to be like kind of cooking a bit on the inside it's still, still going to be really hot so you need to let it rest before you put it in your sandwich so let it rest for a good five minutes so as soon as your cutlet comes out of the fryer you're going to want to season it with both on both sides with a little bit of salt all right sandwich assembly let's go one side kewpie mayonnaise kewpie another side tonkatsu sauce and we want to get some of our shredded finely shredded cabbage get it all up in here yum oh my god this looks so good are you guys excited i'm so excited and then get our beautiful pork cutlet sitting pretty on top and then at this stage i would just add a little bit more tonkatsu sauce on top of your cutlet get the other piece of bread on top oh my god this looks so good and then cut this guy in the middle Oh yeah, baby, look at this. Oh my God. Uh, there you have it guys. That's how you make uh, Japan's famous tonkatsu sandwiches. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video and you try making these for yourself because they're so great. Even if you fry them and let them cool overnight in the fridge, they're still like really, really nice cold, which normally doesn't work with fried food, but they taste great when they're cold as well. They're just delicious. Look at the steam rising out of this one. It looks so good. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Slide into my DMs on Instagram. I'm at Holly Dalton Chef. And let me know how you get on. Let me know if you did this. Let me know in the comments below. How you going? Oh, did you like it? What would you change? Would you make any changes? Did you make any changes? Let me know. And uh, don't forget to mix it up. See you next week. Thanks. Bye.